Hi, I'm Mike Gubby from iSleep Blinds. In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure and install single inside mount roller blinds. When it comes to measuring for your inside mount roller blind, we have to measure the width at the very top of the window frame, and then we have to measure the drop uh, inside the window frame as well. So let's go ahead and measure the width. So we're on the ladder and we're doing that at the top. So Sally, if you could take the tape measure for me and put it inside the recess there. Thank you. And then I put the tape measure across the top of the window frame and then I can read the size. So we're measuring inside this recess uh, just here and you can see I've got the tape measure coming over the top. So what I like to do is stand perfectly straight with the tape measure. I can see my red mark at 2100. So I start counting up. So I've got 2100, 2110 and I write at 2115. So that's the width measurement I write down, 2115 millimetres. When it comes to measuring the drop of the window frame, we put our tape measure inside the window frame like that. And then I'm just measuring 2000, 2050. So my drop size is 2050 millimeters. The next step of the process is installing your brackets. And you'll see that you'll get two different types of bracket. This is a male bracket, and this one here is a female bracket. The male bracket is what we use for the chain drive end or the motor end and the female bracket is the one that we use for the pin end. So because the blind that we're going to install is a left hand chain drive, we're gonna fit our male bracket on the left hand side and our female bracket on the right hand side. When it comes to fitting the chain drive in the male bracket, it's really important that little plastic cover is facing at 12 o'clock. So when we're just about to install this blind, you can see that that uh, chain drive goes straight onto that bracket and you can see that my chain is hanging equally at both sides. So therefore, when the blind goes up and down, you can see that's nice and smooth. Now, if I was to do that incorrect and I was to put the chain drive like that, the cover's not facing at 12 o'clock, you can see that it's really difficult to get the blind to roll down. So it's really important that that cover goes at 12 o'clock. Now, if I was face fitting my bracket, so my bracket was in this direction, again, at the 12 o'clock position, you can see my chain is hanging equally on both sides and my chain drive is operating really smoothly. Let's talk about the female bracket, which is this end here. And this is the end that we call the pin end, okay? The reason for that is it's got this little pin that sticks out. Um, just here. So when we install the blind, we do it with the pin end in the neutral position. And that bracket there has a little ramp that the pin end compresses, as you can see, and it goes up the ramp and it goes pop into the position. Now this pin end also has a couple of really nice features. When we want to remove the blind, we can, this plastic wheel, we can turn the plastic wheel in the anti-clockwise direction. And I'll just get my fingers out of the way. Can you see the pin end is now retracted? So we can now remove the blind, okay? Now, if there's too much slack in our blind, we can get the pin end, the plastic cog, and we can turn it in the clockwise direction. And can you see, as I'm doing that, this pin end is extending and taking up any slack, okay? Now at any point, I can turn my plastic wheel in the anti-clockwise direction to remove the blind. And if I wanna return this pin end to the neutral position, then I just keep turning clockwise and it'll pop back to the neutral position, which is exactly how we start our installation. So when it comes to fitting your motor into your male bracket, it's really important that you identify where your USB charging port is, which is just right there, okay? And you can also see that the motor has that little flat section uh, underneath there. So that USB cable has to be facing at six o'clock, which is in the straight down direction. So if I'm top fitting my bracket, I'll put it there like that. And can you see how easy that motor slid 
in and out of position, just like that. Okay. Now, if I'm face fitting my bracket, which means I'm fitting it into the wall, then once again, my USB cable is facing at six o'clock and it just slides straight on, but it has to be perfectly aligned at the six o'clock position. So it's facing straight down. So let's now go ahead and install the blind. So Sally, if you can take the chain drive end for me, just make sure that cover's facing at 12 o'clock. I'm gonna lift the blind up. There you go, that's awesome. So I'm now just putting a bit of pressure towards the chain drive. And all I need to do now is just come up underneath the bracket and then simply push it up in position until I hear that click. And now I know that blind's fully installed. The next part of our process is installing the little stop ball on the chain. And before I go ahead and do that, I just wanna show you exactly what it does and why we use it. If I was to roll the roller chain down without the stop ball, you can see the blind will come to the bottom limit where I want you to stop. But if someone was to keep rolling, you can see the fabric will roll down and hit the floor, but it'll also start to roll off the roll tube uh, at the top there. And if essentially if I was to go, keep going, I would in fact re-roll the blind back up in the tube the wrong way around. So it's really important that we get it to stop uh, at the correct stop point. To install the stop ball onto the chain, we just need a simple pair of uh, long nose pliers and I've got the stop ball in my hand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just lower the blind down to the limit that I've measured to, but also in this instance, the bottom of the window frame, which is about there. Now, because this is a front rolling blind, I'm gonna grab the rear chain about 30 mils down from where it goes into the chain drive. And I'm actually just gonna hold that position with my finger is what I'm doing right now. And I'm just giving myself a bit of slack. So that ball right there is exactly the one that I'm gonna fit the, um, the stop barrel to. So I put the barrel uh, in the correct orientation, which is that there. And then I simply use my pliers just to crimp that onto the chain. And you'll hear a little click uh, when it does go into the right position. So that's there. And that's the click that I was just talking about. So now that we've got the stop barrel fitted, I just wanna show you exactly what it does. If we roll the blind now down to our bottom position and then stop the blind, the barrel that's here will prevent the blind from rolling down too far and therefore prevent the fabric from rolling off the tube. But it's really important that I don't want you to use this stop barrel. It's only there for emergencies, okay? So you've got to look for the bottom and you've got to stop the blind in the appropriate spot. If I was to go whack into the stop barrel, then that will eventually uh, snap the chain. The next thing we're gonna do is install our child safety device. Now, this particular cleat is very clever because it enables us to install it two separate ways. Let me show you. We can side fix through this side hole just here, or if we're fitting onto the face of a window, we can fix it through that hole there. So there's two screw positions that we can use and both positions don't end up twisting the chain. The first thing we have to do with the child safe device is open it. And the way we do that is just click it open like that, okay? Now, can you see that flat section is now facing towards the glass? So this is the exact way we want to install the child safe device. So we just open it up, we put it over the chain, and then we close it and lock it in position. Now, the first thing we've got to do is pull it down nice and taut but then we relax it about 10 or so millimeters, just so we have a little bit of slack in the chain, but obviously not too much, all right? So once I'm happy with the right position, I'm just gonna pre-drill the side hole, so. Like that. And now I'm gonna put my screw in. So I'll just change bits. This is the screw that I'm gonna use onto the driver and then back into that pre-drilled hole. And I install it just like that. So you can see the flat section is at the back. The child safe device is nice and tight. And I've just got myself just a little bit of slack to operate the blind smoothly. 
so that's how easy it is to install and measure an inside mount roller blind. For more information, please click on the links below and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Mike Gubby, thanks for watching.